What's up everyone? Welcome back to The Manic Geek. I hope you're all doing well out there. Today, we are gonna be taking a look at two entries from Fractal Design's Celsius Plus lineup of all-in-one liquid CPU coolers, the S24 Dynamic and the S28 Prisma. Now, before we get going, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to Fractal Design for supplying these units for testing today. Wouldn't have been possible without their help. And to be honest, I've actually been in uh, quite a bit of communication with them over this. This has been something of an emotional review for me. Uh, so just right off the bat, I'm gonna let you all know, this may be a bit of a lengthy video. Timestamps will be down in the video's description as well as all of my testing methodology and setup used for comparing these all-in-ones today. Now, while it's the S28 Prisma that I have on the desk right now, most of what I'll be discussing here on out will apply to the S24 Dynamic as well, starting with build quality. The both of these have excellent build quality. I mean, just looking at it and holding it in hand, this feels like a premium product. The soft touch plastic on the pump top makes this look really classy and helps it blend in with basically any build setup that you've got out there. Uh, I wouldn't really worry about the fingerprintiness of it. I mean, how frequently are you gonna be touching your all-in-one, right? It's also got a really sharp looking glass top on the top of it. Admittedly, the ring of lighting around the side of it doesn't really play off of the glass a whole lot. It's mostly going to be any of your internal case lighting that does that. But as I stated, the ring around does light up. There are six addressable RGBs in there and the Fractal Design logo lights up as well. Now in my B-roll today, you will not be seeing any addressable RGB lighting effects on the pump itself. I will explain that later on in the video. Now this all-in-one is designed with quality of life in mind. So along with the great build quality we've got here, we've got these really well articulated uh, fittings on the side of the pump that terminate into these really cleanly braided and except exceptionally long uh, bits of tubing here that run to the, uh, the end tanks of the radiator, of course. But the sleeving here is also concealing two additional cables that run from the pump itself to a cable distribution hub at the top of every Celsius Plus radiator. The point of this hub is to allow you to control up to three PWM fans and up to an additional ARGB three pin connection to synchronize everything and only need to connect fans and case lighting through your Celsius Plus all-in-one. Now the nice thing about the functionality here is that you can bypass this distribution hub if you want to, but in using it, you are affording yourself a lot of quality of life features, especially in terms of maintaining this all-in-one over the course of time. Now, as far as the radiators themselves go, all of the models that I had on hand today for testing measured at about 20 FPI for fin density, and I'll go ahead and have the rest of the specs for the radiators on the screen right now. You will need relatively high static pressure fans to overcome this kind of fin density on the radiator. And as we'll see in the performance testing later on, that does mostly hold water here, but there's some caveats. Now, as far as the AMD mounting system is concerned, there aren't really any major complaints to be had with this bracket. It basically uses the existing AM4 plastic mounting hardware that comes on the motherboard and just hoops in one side. And then there's a second hoop that you put through this opening at the top here. And there's a threaded shank on the end. You put a thumb nut on it, hoop it, and just tighten it up and you're done. On paper, at least, that's how it should work. In practice, the shank could stand to be about a millimeter or two longer just for quality of life and making it easier to thread on the thumb nut prior to hooping it onto the AM4 mounting hardware because I did have a little bit of difficulty getting it hooped correctly. But in the end, it wound up not being the biggest deal ever. Now, the other quality of life benefit to using something like the Celsius Plus all-in-ones is ultimately cable management. And with the inclusion of the distribution hub on all of these radiators, plus little double-sided 3M backed uh, cable clips that they supply for you to mount cables to the side of the radiator, it's nothing to keep these cables tidy and out of the way. They don't need to be museum quality clean here. That's not the point. You're never gonna see them. They just need to be out of the way and easy to reach and remove from the all-in-one in the event you need to do any servicing on it like cleaning it or maybe replacing a defective fan. As far as time investment in the cable management, it's really not even much of a thing. With the S28 Dynamic in particular, from, from fan mounting to putting the clips on the side and getting everything done, it was maybe a grand total of 
three and a half, four minutes that I spent managing the cables here. And it's just gonna make this thing easier to use later on down the line. Now, let's talk shop about performance testing here. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw the numbers up on the screen for you all to take a look at while I uh, sort of chit chat a little bit about the results. Again, if you want to see more on my testing methodology and the specs used for testing these all-in-ones, that is down in the video's description. Now, stock performance is what's on the screen right now, meaning the fans that were included with the all-in-ones in the way they were intended to be used out of the box, which means run into the distribution hub and managed via the PWM cable that comes off of the pump. It should also be noted really quickly, I ran the both of these in PWM mode. There are two different modes that you can select for the Celsius Plus all-in-ones to run in, and they're adjusted physically via an adjuster ring on the top of the pump. There'll be a little LED indicator letting you know which mode you have selected that will fade away after a set amount of time. Using the auto setting in theory is supposed to keep things performing well while keeping things silent, whereas PWM mode basically just lets the motherboard take control of the all-in-one. I did not really like the performance that I saw with auto mode. My pump ran way too low all the time and it didn't really feel like it was doing much of anything to be honest. So. PWM mode is the big brain move here. But anyway, getting back to the performance numbers, you may notice there's a bit of a small issue with low RPM performance, at least as it pertains to the S24 Dynamic. Low RPM performance drops off dramatically with these heat sinks. And it's because when you're running these through the fan distribution hub, they must adjust, the fans must adjust their speed in line with the pump. What that means is you're not only losing the efficiency of the fans to move heat off of the radiator, but you're also now losing efficiency of the water being able to quickly and effectively move heat off of the cold plate. What this has the effect of doing is exacerbating, at least as far as the numbers I've seen, lower static pressure ratings on fans. So to act as a sort of sanity check for these numbers, I also went ahead and tested my S24 with my own Prisma and Venturi fans I had on hand, just to see if there was any sort of appreciable difference between the other fans in the Fractal Design lineup. Sure enough, we're seeing more or less the same thing here. At about 75% speed and up, there's really not much of a difference between the Venturis, the Prismas, and the Dynamics. It's once we start running at 50% speed or lower when run through the distribution hub on the S24 that we start to see appreciable differences in lower RPM performance. And it's actually worth noting that the Prismas are actually able to hold their own on the S24's all-in-one design at 50% RPM with the Overclock 2600 we used. However, the Venturis were not able to pass all three of my rounds of stress testing and did wind up tripping thermal protections on my motherboard. For something like a, a 2600 or a 3600 CPU, if you've got any sort of decent overclock going on these or you wanna make sure that XFR and PBO are able to do their thing as efficiently as possible, I wouldn't spend on anything more than the S24 lineup of all-in-ones. Much beyond that, you're basically just paying for lower levels of noise operation. So I really quickly want to touch on my addressable RGB lighting experience here. The S28 Prisma fans themselves, as well as my S24 Prisma fans, work great with RGB Fusion 2.0. The pumps, however, for both of the Celsius Plus units I have on hand do not play nicely with my X470 RS Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard. I've done a lot of behind the scenes diagnosing and testing with Fractal Design, who was also able to replicate my results with these all-in-ones in their own testing. So we have gotten more people involved with this. I will pin a comment down in the video comment section if there is any sort of fix that comes about with this issue. And it's it really is a shame because I'm suspecting that most other RGB Fusion equipped motherboards will probably work just fine with either of the all-in-ones we had here. But for whatever reason, my specific motherboard just is not playing nice with this all-in-one. But performance-wise, everything else is working correctly. All right, so conclusion time here. These are premium all-in-ones at premium pricing, and I'll go ahead and throw the pricing up on the screen for you right now so you're aware of what you should be paying for these all-in-ones. 
pricing and availability is kind of weird with some components right now, including members of the Celsius Plus lineup. And I have seen some really, really scalpy prices out there. So make sure you know what you should be spending on these products before you pull the trigger on them and understand that you are paying premium pricing here. There are less expensive options out there, but they may not afford you the kind of quality of life features that something like the Celsius Plus offers. They also may not offer the kind of build quality or the kind of warranty this has. I believe this has something like a five year warranty on it. But as far as how I would personally feel about spending money on these, I'm using the S24 with Prisma fans in my production rig right now. Performance is great, it looks awesome, it acoustically is exactly what I'm looking for. So I personally would have felt great about the purchase. But how about you? What do you think about these Celsius Plus units now that we've gone over a pretty broad spectrum of what to expect here? Sound off in the comments down below. What do you think about Fractal Design's offering here? What do you like? What do you not like about these? What's some feedback you have for them? Uh, I will go ahead and link down in the video's description Fractal Design's customer service links so you can reach out to them if you have any uh, ideas or suggestions for them on this or any of their other products because it's always been my experience the Fractal Design customer service team is among the best in the industry and they actually do care about what you have to say. Anyway, that's finally gonna wrap it up for this one. Those of you that sat through this whole thing. Thank you so much for watching. Toss a thumbs up on the video if you liked what you saw. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon next to it so you're notified every time I upload fresh content for you. And I will catch you all next time. So take it easy.